Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. Over the next couple of episodes, we're going to talk about recording the physical logistics of recording audio into Cubase, both with a microphone, which is going to be the subject of today's episode, because we need to talk about the control room and our um, guitar feed, which we'll talk about in the next episode. Before we uh, embark on any of that, point you at the Patreon link below if you want to check out uh, my Patreon site. That would be absolutely awesome. It's a fantastic way to help support me and my channel. Now, earlier on in this um, video series, we had a look at audio connections and we really only scratched the surface because when we had a look at inputs and outputs, there was almost nothing to see. We've got this single guitar input. We'll deal with that in the next episode. Nothing in the output section apart from this really weird kind of not, not connected thing. And then all of the good stuff is in this tab called Control Room. So what's this all about? Well, the Control Room isn't designed for use by solo musicians at all. The concept is that you're in a recording studio. The engineer wants to talk to the vocalist in their headphones, presses a button, the music gets muted. You can talk to the vocalist directly. The vocalist can hear um, a bespoke mix of all of the various instruments, whereas the guitarist might want might want a different mix of the, the, the different instruments. All of that stuff is how the control room is designed to operate. We have these things called cues. Uh, you can see that I have one cue configured here. We'll talk about that shortly. And by clicking add channel, we can add up to three other cues for a total of four. And we also have a thing called talkback, the little microphone symbol here. Uh, that's fundamental to how uh, we get our microphone sound and how you're able to hear me now. So why do I need to use Control Room at all if I'm a solo musician and I'm not in a recording studio? Two reasons. Firstly, I need it to make OBS work. OBS, which is the software that I use to record these videos, is very unhappy living on a PC alongside Cubase. Basically, they both want to use the ASIO driver they can't both use the ASIO driver, things go horribly wrong and it's just a very sad situation. The way you get around it is by using a physical loopback. Um, I have my um, Focusrite uh, audio interface. I have a dedicated couple of jacks coming out of what, uh, 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 an output pair back into inputs one and two on the same device. Inputs one and two are the only inputs that OBS can hear. It doesn't matter that my audio device has 18 inputs, which it happens to, it's an 18i8. OBS only hears the first two. It's an enormous pain. I wish it wasn't the case, but it is. I have to live with it. So Control Room allows me to configure that loopback system. I'll show you that shortly. The second advantage of using Control Room is that I get to have a completely independent microphone. The microphone is at a peer-to-peer -peer level with the rest of the Cubase project. So firstly, let's have a quick look at how it's configured. You click add channel, depending on what kind of thing that you want. You see that there's no um, microphone symbol here. It's because I've already added one. You only get one talkback channel and you specify what your microphone is. So you can see that I've got, got it connected to input three on my focus, right? That's my microphone. Then we've got this curious loop back um, system. So outputs three and four have uh, audio jacks connected into inputs one and two of the focus right. It's important to stress Cubase does not care in the slightest about these inputs. Can you see that they're inactive? The project itself doesn't hear any of the audio that goes to those inputs. It's purely for the purpose of routing that audio to OBS. But as a side benefit, I get to piggyback on that channel because the beauty of the loopback system is that it's got all of the data coming out of uh, Cubase uh, from the stereo out, but it's also got all of the control room data. So as you're listening to me now on the microphone, you're hearing this microphone through the control room. What this means is that I get to mute the project entirely, press play. The song's now running in the background. I'm still talking to you. It doesn't care. The, the control room doesn't care what the volume of the stereo output is. I can mix those two things together. And actually this is how I mix the level of the music that I'm playing to you 
with the sound of my voice. Those two things get combined, sent as a single stream off to OBS. It's a limitation of my video editing software that I can't then split those two audio tracks out. I could theoretically, but you wouldn't believe how much hassle it is. It's just way, way too, way too difficult. So I need to make sure that those two levels are balanced properly before I record them into OBS and sometimes I get it wrong and I'm very sad. Back to the audio connections. Uh, the one at the bottom we really don't need to talk about very much today. Those are the physical speakers in my room. So the control room is basically sending a monitor output, little speaker symbol, to my hi-fi speakers. They're almost never on. I, I do the vast majority of my work in this room using headphones. So that's the, the audio connection side of the control room configured. Then we need to open the control room itself. You can get to it from the right hand tab, which is currently hidden by my head, but it is, it's on this um, right hand panel. But because um, I'm obscuring that today, I'm showing you the independent panel. So here's the loop back. You see that I've defined it as the Q1. And so I've created this Q in the control room. All of the output from the Cubase project is mixed with the vocal. That's the important thing. These two things, as I say, are peer to peer. They're both living at the same level. They're mixed together. And by turning the cue on, you get to hear me. If I went to just the Cubase project mix, you'd stop hearing me. So that's basically showing you that the microphone and the Cubase project are separate and independent. What this means is that when I come to record my vocals, I'm actually doing them through the control room. If we have a look at the vocal track in the project, um, as you've got at the moment, I think it's misconfigured. It's actually set to the mono guitar, but if you set it to main mic, that's the control room input. So the control room inputs now feeding directly into this track. One of the weird side effects of this is that you don't need to monitor enable in order for the vocal to be live because you're hearing the vocal through the control room. The track is also hearing the vocal because it's record armed. If I start recording now, you're gonna hear the, me talking over the top, but you can also see that I'm being recorded at the same time. I didn't need to engage uh, monitoring. Now, if I turn the stereo out volume back up, yeah, the me talking over the top, but you can also, there I am. So that's kind of cool having that separate um, stream of data for the microphone going into Cubase, but it's not really essential. Another feature of um, Control Room that just tips it into work being worthwhile even if you're not recording yourself into OBS. Let's be absolutely honest. If it wasn't for the issues that I had with OBS, I probably wouldn't use the Control Room, but I'm glad I do. And the main reason I'm glad I do is because you can have permanently configured inserts on your vocal track. So this is this is me configuring the main microphone talkback track inside the control room that's designed for the engineer to be able to press the button and talk to the vocalist, whatever they want to do. I'm using it for a different purpose. I'm actually assigning insert effects into the uh, talkback track itself. And I'm using that as my main vocal recording output. So whenever I record Pauline singing vocals, I have the option to leave the control room completely alone if I want, and then all of these inserts will be applied. Now the reason I've got inserts set up on the vocal track is predominantly because of the outrageous background noise in this room. Not a tenable situation. You know, you can't really put up with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Two main reasons for that. I've got a fairly powerful PC with a pretty loud fan. I have actually thought about just drilling a large hole into a wall and putting the PC in a different room. There's all sorts of potential solutions, but cost and logistics have prevented me from actually uh, employing any of them. I basically use a denoiser and to take all of that stuff away. Now, I have to confess, these aren't Steinberg products. I think Steinberg have an equivalent for each of these, but I'm gonna run through them briefly anyway. Then we've got a de taking away all the nasty sibilant sounds that you can hear slithering into the s There we go. So 
that's what the DS does. Then we go into a Neve emulation. So this is basically just, um, just warming the sound up, frankly, and taking a little bit of the, of the bass sound out of my voice. Sometimes I'm just a little bit bassy. So you can see that I've got um, a shelf set up and I've actually got the, uh, a little bit of low cut um, on this setting as well. And then finally into a limiter, if I do any like unusually loud noises, the limit, limiter will catch a little bit of that. It's not absolutely brutal. It's not um, a brick wall limiter, but it is just taming some of those um, overexcited transients. So all of that adds together to make the vocal sound that you're hearing. Turn them all off and I would sound like that. I'm not going to say much more than that about the control room because I've never used them in their genuine, in their natural environment. So I don't understand the concept of routing and monitoring and queuing in the same way that a proper um, engineer would in a recording studio. I've basically twisted it to my purpose. This works. That's the bottom line. I'm able to record the data in OBS. I've got my microphone permanently connected as long as I press, remember to press my, my, my turn my cue on. And I really like having the vocals being completely independent from the project. It makes everything really easy to use once you've got it configured. You know, getting to the stage where this all actually worked took me, you know, quite a while, but once it's done, it's done. And then I can save all of these configurations, bake it into my standard template. Every time I create a song, I get all of this stuff for free. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching.